So, this uh, small section, um, in this small section we are going to uh, uh, briefly demonstrate some sheet forming experiment. Uh, these experiments were done uh, in some of our labs with a very simple setup which will be easy for anybody to uh, do it in their labs and we can evaluate certain outputs from that. So, the first one, the video will be there, you can look into this. This is the V bending of sheet, initially sheet was shown and here you can see uh, a setup we have with a simple punch. So, this is your actually the punch, okay, it is a V bending punch and uh, this is the die, you can see the channel here which is of V shape and uh, if you look into this punch here, this particular punch okay, can be replaced and there is a fastener above that you can see here, this fastener can be removed and the punch can be replaced so that you can make a different uh, dimensions of punch with a different corner radius maybe and you can see that the person is showing that you have to keep it like this and the punch will be clamped in the machine now, die will also be clamped you will see, yes. So, the clamping is done, you can see a simple setup here, okay. it is simple to easy to install it in an UTM, this is a simple hydraulic UTM you can see and uh, the punch is actually tightened. This punch can be replaced, you can see that there is a T slot which is used to clamp uh, the uh, punch and which can be replaced, you can install a new punch with that and the punch is adjusted you can see, yes. So, uh, and you will see that now this die is kept on the UTM. So, this uh, setup is little heavy, okay, so that uh, you may not need to actually clamp the tool, rather you can just keep it, it can lie on a place with its own weight. So, but only thing is you have to adjust it in such that when the punch comes down, it should uh, match with the groove. So, you can see that uh, slowly the punch is uh, giving vertical displacement, it, the ram is coming down. So, uh, the hydraulic is adjusted you can see. and uh, the punch is uh, coming down and slowly because it is a screw driven. So, it is uh, coming down slowly and uh, once it uh, reaches the die level, then you have to be careful, you have to little bit adjust it. So, that uh, the punch is uh, in line with uh, the channel, V channel or V groove. So, uh, it is nearing uh, the die position and uh, we may have to locate the sheet properly here and uh, you can just see that, uh, yeah. So, you have to just check whether it is reached that level or not, okay. Once it is uh, reached, you can remove the sheet and uh, you can just see now that uh, it will be adjusted. So, it has come down and then you have to adjust it. So, the final one should be clamped properly. Until then you have to little bit adjust it so that uh, So, now it is adjusted. So, after this die should not be moved. Uh, so, you have to be little bit careful, die should not be moved after this. Yes, now it is moved up, it is located properly. And now the sheet is kept located uh, on the die. We are not going to use any lubricant or anything in this 
a simple uh, bending operation v bending operation and uh, you will see that uh, uh, here there is no holding ah, so it is just moment only sheet moment moment is given to the sheet for it to bend so there is no applied tension here so you are going to give only moment to that and uh, you will see that now vertical displacement is given uh, to the ram and punch is also moving down the sheet is bending the sheet is uh, further bent so now you have to bend the sheet to such an extent that it takes uh, almost the shape of the uh, this v group so you can see that on the on the die surface the sheet is moving up right so which means that it is not uh, held in that location it is just uh, you know bending with uh, moment so it is bent so now depending on this angle it may little bit slide in and uh, important point that one should look right now is after a particular stage you know the displacement will be stopped and the ram will be taken away at that time you will see that the sheet will try to relax you can see spring back it will try to relax the angle is going to change now you can see so it has gone down and uh, maybe even if you stop it now and if you try to displace in the upward direction slowly you will see some relaxation you see that it is relaxed now so the sheet is relaxing you see that the angle included angle is now which is not the same as that of the die it has increased now and uh, now it it's it's like uh, experiment is over now so you can take the sheet out and the sheet is bent this must be some aluminum alloy the sheet must be an aluminum alloy and you can see whether uh, is there any uh, necking happened on the outside region okay on the tensile on the tensile surface you can see on the the bottom one yeah so there is no neck no crack is developed it's still fine okay but you can measure the included angle and you can compare it with uh, the die angle so you can get some idea of what is the spring back the angle change so like this one can compare materials of different strength and ductility to check how bending happens so this is a simple uh, v bending setup which you can make it in a lab itself and you can do this kind of experiments theoretically we did some analysis to evaluate spring back and to evaluate uh, uh, you can also get a load displacement graph from the machine itself okay there will be a computer interface in the next experiment we will see in different experiment there will be a computer interface in that you can get load displacement graph which will give you some idea of uh, what kind of load it's going to have during deformation so this is about uh, your v bending of sheet and uh, simple tools are there one die is required and there is a corresponding punch that is required so punch can be replaced so you can change the punch corner radius to see uh, you know is there any change in the uh, deformation in spring back all those studies can be made okay so uh, you can also uh, do some materials processing on the sheet to change the deformation pattern say for example you can do some sort of heat treatment you can do some processing like friction stir processing and you can study the bending behavior these are all possible now let's go to the next one which is on deep drawing so uh, you will see that uh, here this is the uh, blank holder the first one which is shown which has got lot of holes there to clamp it on to the die and this is the die the central hole is actually the die hole okay into which the sheet is going to be pushed inside okay, the inward movement will happen radial movement will happen inside that and the column which is shown which is just below that ring region is actually will be used to clamp the die on to the machine and there are two windows 
on this vertical column you can see here okay here also you can see some so with that can be used to see whether uh, the sheet is actually drawing in or not or you want to check something you can do that you can put a camera inside and you can just uh, see the deformation level if you want to so again this is a bit heavy setup but then you can make it with simple hardwares in your lab itself this must be a i think a stainless steel sheet which must be having good deep drawability and you can apply a little lubricant on that which is what is shown here you can see lot of fasteners are there align key spanners are required so it's a simple setup there is a blank holder and there is a die so and you can apply on the die surface so the sheet diameter is taken such a way that uh, it is diameter is less than the the location where fastening is going to happen so i'm just going to place a sheet here right so it is placed uh, coaxially okay it should be at the, exactly at the center but one difficulty in this we cannot see the deformation so the sheet can slide in it may not be axisymmetric while it is deforming so one has to be careful so you are going to place a blank holder like a ring so here blank holding is done with mechanical fastening okay instead of hydraulic gripping here you are going to do mechanical fastening and uh, you can put fasteners like this and you can tighten it so you can give uh, a full tightening so that you have some blank holding force on the sheet so that it can avoid wrinkling so there are uh, probably eight fasteners required so all may not be required maybe you can have uh, maybe four four also would be sufficient so the cup that will be formed in this will have about 50 mm diameter okay so accordingly the setup has been made so now the second fastener is tightened the fastener can be kept upside down also so that there is no disturbance for the punch movement in the vertical direction so the third fastener is uh, located now so while doing it one should be very careful that the sheet is not displaced from its position that is very important so if you so this is just a demonstration class so if you are going to do some experiments which will be useful for your project research work type of thing where data is very important for you practical data and you want to verify it uh, with some you know theoretical calculations estimation then you have to do it uh, meticulously uh, you have to check couple of times whether the sheet is displaced after locking all these things or after locking it should not get displaced or while locking it should not get displaced one should look into all these things the steps are very important here and you have also put lubricant so there is there are chances that it may slide from its position so one should be careful so and uh, you can see that the entire setup is going to be clamped in the same mission we have used a simple mission utm but this can also be installed in a, a dynamic testing mission as well so wherein you can get you know accurate data and you can see the punch is already installed onto the upper ramp okay the punch is already installed you can see that this fellow okay is already installed into the upper ramp it's a cylindrical punch okay which is going to match with the die hole it's a simple setup so and uh, like in the v bending operation so here also you have to locate your punch appropriately so that uh, you have to adjust the die and then you have to clamp the die and now you uh, allow vertical displacement uh, by using uh, your uh, machine you can see that it's a utm and the hydraulic can be controlled and there is a computer interface on your right okay so and all the details can be mentioned here okay and uh, when you start the test because of vertical movement you know your sheet will be pushed inside the die hole because of radial inward movement on the die surface yeah so now the test is started i think and you will see the load displacement graph can be obtained like this 
So, you can start the mission and you can open hydraulic so that uh, deformation happens at a normal rate, slow rate, slowly. So, uh, now uh, yes, you can see that some data we are uh, obtaining, load versus displacement, some data we are having, you can see that the load keeps on increasing with respect to displacement, about 1.5 mm, 1.6 mm displacement has been done now, which is about 9 kilo Newton is going to reach, okay. So, uh, you can look into it and then uh, now I think a test is almost done now, so it will take only maybe few minutes one can complete it. So, you can remove the punch, take it out and take the entire setup, unlock it and take the entire setup out, yes and then uh, unlock your blank holding uh, uh, ring, blank holder ring and you can see that a cup is formed, but uh, here you can see that actually the sheet is little bit displaced and the cup is not uh, axisymmetric. You can see if some flange region is there on one side and uh, flange region is totally gone on the other side, you can see that, that is why I was telling you that you have to be very, very careful when you do this. If you want to take real data which will be useful for some calculations, then you have to locate it properly. So, this is how cup is formed and uh, you can see in this final cup there is some small uh, you know waviness in the wall region, okay. Uh, wherever uh, you have uh, uh, the cup that is fully drawn on the on the left side, you can see there is small you know wrinkling on the walls that should not be there, okay. And uh, one good thing is that uh, there is no wrinkling on the flange region which you can visibly, which is visible. Okay. And one can get a full load displacement graph and you can do any analysis you want or you can do, uh, you know, you can validate it with experimental results if you have some analytical modeling done. So, in the previous video, we have seen a deep drawing of sheet. Now, I am going to show you another demonstration of same deep drawing, okay, uh, to get an axisymmetric cup. Huh? In the previous one, it was uh, not axisymmetric, is not it? So, I am just going to show you a demonstration. So, uh, uh, for the same deep drawing and you will see that uh, again uh, the same die is used, okay. I am just, uh, you know, you will see that it is the same die, I am little fast forwarding it, okay. And uh, it is a 50 mm cup that is formed. Uh, so, so now you will see that uh, the sheet will be, uh, it is a circular sheet, uh, the same sheet is taken. So, if you want to measure strains on the sheet surface, then you may have to put circle grids on that. You may have to print circle grids so that you can measure strains at different locations of the deep drawn cup. So, you have a flange region, cup wall and cup bottom like that. So, you put lubricant so that you have some nice cup that is formed. Grease would be better and you need to put a fasteners also. So, you place it, uh, it should be symmetric. Otherwise, uh, you will get a distorted cup. So, you have to locate it properly. See, moment you put lubricant, uh, you have to be careful, yeah. So, so what do you do is either you can keep the uh, die on the uh, machine and then you can place the sheet and blank holder, all those things or you can arrange everything outside and then place the die. Uh, you know entire assemble setup on the uh, machine, both ways you can do, okay. But uh, this way uh, you know doing it you know assembly uh, outside the machine is actually safe, okay. So, that you do not need to uh, you know see whether RAM is moving or not. Uh, of course, you stop the machine and do, but then this is the safest way to do. So, you are putting fasteners and uh, it should be uh, tightened such that uh, uh, appropriate blank holding force is given mechanically, uh, it is a mechanical blank holding force only, not the hydraulic one and it has to be tightened well and uh, so you have, you have to adjust it and then you can see that uh, all the fasteners are now assembled, yes. 
and it has been put on the UTM, same UTM which I used for the previous experiment. Now this uh, rigid punch is held on the uh, you know upper platen and uh, you allow hydraulic to come down uh, but when you do it you have to do it a little bit slowly so that you can uh, uh, so that the punch and the die are coaxial become coaxial so when you when you try to insert the punch you have to be a little bit careful so that uh, they slide very nicely yes and then you can uh, tighten the uh, dice so that it does not get uh, displaced so now uh, once your assembly is done in the machine you can see you can uh, uh, you know start the uh, displacement of the you know ram and uh, punch will move down so that the cup is actually pushed inside the die hole to form the cup okay and you can see that uh, so this is your uh, uh, graphic uh, uh, interface you can see load versus displacement hydraulic is controlled and you can see that uh, y axis is load x axis is displacement and you can see the data and we know that uh, there will be a typical load displacement graph for any material and uh, you can see that it is continuing now so load keeps on increasing you will see that it goes on Okay. So, there is about uh, 3 of 3, 3.5 mm displacement and load is about uh, uh, you have about uh, 14 or 15, 14 to 15 kilo Newton is there. Okay. So, you continue that until you get a full cup. Okay. So, now only issue here is, so you may have to fabricate a setup through which you can see the cup that is formed. Okay. There are several ways to do. Okay. One way is you can make a window and just below the die so that you can see it or you can have a, a video you know a camera sensor type of thing arrangement which can be kept below the uh, you know the cup that is formed and you can see you know in your computer or in mobile also you can see whether it is uh, drawn fully or not there are several ways one can do it so otherwise you have to get uh, you know a sense from your low displacement graph okay so uh, that is the only way otherwise so, visual uh, thing you may have to make a separate uh, camera arrangement for that. See, it is almost like uh, 8 mm displacement, 8 mm cup height is formed now and depending on the material and thickness, you will get the load. Okay. So, otherwise it will keep on increasing. So, we are just basically repeating the experiment and it is going to be like this. So, we keep on increasing it. So, you can see the slope is slightly changed. So, it is you can see that it is almost saturating now, which means that there are chances of you know cup is already formed because there is less material to get deformed. You can see that load is coming down actually. So, you have to be a little bit careful. You can stop the machine, yes, stop the ram movement, and uh, you may have to take it out slowly and then disassemble the setup, and uh, you will see that. Uh, this time at least uh, let us see a nice circular cup is formed uh, which looks like an axisymmetric one yes this is better than the previous one you can see uh, there is a small flange uh, we did not draw it fully so that you can see what is the status there is a cup bottom that is formed is not it there is a cup bottom is there okay and uh, you have a you know you have a flange region so you can see that this is your flange region okay and uh, you have a a cup bottom and uh, there is a you know cup wall region so all three regions are formed and now the the cup is almost uh, you know axisymmetric so this is the way deep drawing has to be done okay so now the next video which i am going to show you um, is basically uh, you know you can see it is nothing but a, a stretch forming of sheets so uh, in the stretch forming of sheet okay uh, you will see that uh, the main aim here is to basically uh, deform the sheet okay and then uh, through through a punch uh, you know an experimental setup uh, punch die blank holder setup and then uh, deform the sheet so that at the end of the experiment you can actually construct a forming limit curve that is the whole idea okay so we are not going to do deep drawing rather what we are going to do is a stretching operation where 
the sheet is actually not going to draw in. That is the whole idea here. And uh, as I told you previously, you want to measure strains on the sheet surface, which is mandatory okay, uh, when you construct a forming limit curve, because forming limit curve is between major strain and minor strain that we already studied. So, you want to get the necking strains or fracture strains, then you need to put circle grids on the surface. A simpler way to do it is through electrochemical etching. You can see that the person is doing electrochemical etching. This is the setup and you can see that uh, okay, it is nicely formed. Okay, you can see the circle grids are printed on the sheet surface, right? Very nice ones are made. So, circle grids are particular diameter. Uh, one should know the diameter, initial diameter. Now, this is uh, another sheet with a different strain path. And uh, as you know, uh, for doing, for evaluating this forming limit curve, okay, through this kind of stretching operations, uh, limiting dome height test is generally followed. Okay. Limiting dome height test is generally followed. We have elaborately discussed about it in one of the chapters. This is just a demonstration. And uh, in this case, you will know that there are several strain parts to which the material has to be deformed. The first one that was deformed is uh, like for example, in the negative minus strain, in the negative minus strain of the forming limit diagram. Okay. That is why you have width which is uh, you know like of the order of 20 mm or something. But here, the one which is uh, now printed is in the plane strain strain path. That is why width is slightly larger. You can see at the mid region, the width is slightly larger than the previous sheet. Right here also circle grids are formed. You see that? So, you have to put the circle grids on the outer surface of the sheet when it is kept on the die punch setup that you will see later on in this, in this video. Now, this is the third strain path. So, I am going to show you only three strain paths. Okay, uh, so this is the third one. This is a circular sheet. You can see. So this, uh, if you deform the sheet, this will deform in balanced biaxial stretching. Okay, where alpha is equal to beta is equal to one. The previous one is basically a beta is equal to zero. Okay, and uh, you also know what is what it's going to be there for negative minus strain, for tensile strain path. And here you will see that the circle grids are made at the center of the sample. You can put for the whole sample, does not matter because half of the sample will be in the clamping zone. So, it is not going to deform. Okay, so, here nicely you see that the circle grid is formed here you see. So, this stencil you have to make. The circle grid stencil, the green color one, that uh, layer plastic sheet, you can make it. Okay, and this electrochemical setup can be, uh, you know, etching setup can be made. It is available in practice. Okay. So, this is the hydraulic press which we are going to use, this 100 ton hydraulic press which we are going to use for stretching operation and you will see that uh, uh, the bottom one is basically, uh, you know, you can see the die and there is a projection, there is a draw bead and punch is coming out, you can see, punch will come from bottom. Uh, the uppermost one is actually the blank holder. Okay. So, there are two actions here. Okay. One, the blank holder will come and hold the sheet and then inside that uh, you know your die punch will come from bottom. Okay. See now this is the main difference between deep drawing and stretching with respect to the usage of machine. So in deep drawing operation you will see the sheet is mechanically clamped with fasteners right. So but here you can see the sheet is clamped with a, uh, uh, a hydraulic pressure. So it is a first action is done. Now second action will is nothing but a punch moving in the upward direction. So, naturally you cannot see that, okay, the punch is deformed, uh, you know, the punch is, uh, is moved up and it has deformed the sheet. You can see that, uh, see, uh, it, you have to deform it up to fracture, okay. And uh, of course, if you have uh, ability to stop it at necking, that is good because some materials undergo necking and then fracture, okay. So, you, if you can stop it at necking, that is good, actually one should do that. But here is actually, since it is a demonstration, so it is actually fractured. Now, you see that circle grids are deformed into ellipses. So, you can find strains from that, right? So, you can find strains from that near the fracture and that becomes your, uh, you know, your necking strains or limit strains of one particular strain path while developing the forming limit curve. So, you have to do like that for several strain paths, several alphas and betas, right? So, one is done. This is a second one. You can see this is a second. This is for plain strain strain path. So, now it is clamped so that the sheet does not move in. Now, punch must be deforming the sheet. So, 
a deformation is going on. Yes, it is go still going on and you may have to, you have to fracture it you have to, or you have to stop it at making. So, now you can see that the sheet is again uh, you know fractured, you can take it out now. You can see that you know the, the draw bead has created an impression, you can see that in the bend region draw bead has created an impression, is not it? That is why you need a draw bead, so that the sheet does not actually draw in actually, okay. it is a, it, it's going to undergo only stretching. Now, you can see you can measure strain grids on the uh, near the uh, fracture location to get the limit strains in this particular strain path. Now, this is the third one, this is the third one balanced biaxial stretching or equibiaxial stretching you can say or equibiaxial tension so, beta is equal to 1, alpha is equal to 1, no? that region it will come. So, now again it is clamping the sheet. So, you can adjust the blank holder uh, pressure actually. Okay. You can adjust the blank holder pressure. If the sheet is not clamped well, you can easily find out and uh, on the left side of the machine, there is a uh, you know uh, arrangement for increasing the blank holding pressure. So, once that is done, so your sheet will be clamped fully and uh, here also you can see that this is again uh, fractured, but then it is too much of fracture. Okay. So, one should not go ahead like this actually, but you should be able to stop it just at fracture. One should try for that. We do that regularly. Okay. So, now you here also you can see that the circle grids are deformed into ellipses. Okay. So, so all the three uh, you know uh, sheets are deformed now, is not it? So, so now similarly you can have a few strain paths between the left and middle and middle and right. So, basically you have to increase the width of the sheet, which is going to simulate some predefined strain paths. Okay. So, once that is done, you allow it to fracture, then you can measure the circle grids on the you know uh, near the fracture location that will give you the fracture strains uh, near the to construct the forming limit curve. So, you know how to develop forming limit curve which we already uh, you know taught. So, uh, all the uh, fracture strains major strain and minor strain can be plotted in one graph and then you have to draw a locus. Okay. And uh, at several situations we have discussed how to develop how to evaluate major strain and minor strain right. So, it is going to be pretty simple in the case of circle grids because it is going to be converted into ellipses only right. So, now here you will see that initial diameter is known to you let us say 2.5 mm and now the major axis dimension is measured uh, you see microscope you can measure and minor axis dimension is measured. So, from that you can get major strain and minor strain. So, you have to plot all this fracture data fracture strains in one plot okay, in one graph okay. and then you draw a forming limit curve okay, such that uh, all the fracture strains are going to go above the uh, curve. So, otherwise what you need to do is basically you need to measure the fracture strains near the uh, fracture region and you should also measure some safe strains away from the fracture region, okay. the region away from the fracture region. Say for example, couple of grids away from the fracture location. So, you plot all the strains in one graph and separate safe strains from fracture strains okay, like the way we discussed in the actual uh, lecture. Okay. So, that locus is nothing but your forming limit curve. Okay. So, if you plot it along with uh, all the strains, so it is forming limit diagram. So, this way this limiting dome height test can be conducted okay, uh, in a hydraulic press in which uh, the sheet is clamped first that is in the first action and second action is punch is going to deform the sheet up to fracture. So, in deep drawing we have demonstrated that it can be done in a simple UTM, but here uh, we have shown that uh, this demonstration is done stretching as demonstration is done in the hydraulic press. So, only difference is there in the, in the UTM you need a mechanical clamping method and here it is hydraulically clamped. Okay. So, uh, this way one can develop forming limit curve and you can do deep drawing and previously we have also demonstrated about uh, sheet bending operations. Tensile test you know what to do, uh, you know many of you have understood that. So, with this we stop this video demonstration, thank you. Mm -hmm.